many years ago. And um, like Margaret said, I, I do work in the tech in industry. And, uh, but this is, this is a space with all of that day to day, this is a space where I can let go of all of that and really kind of focus and center. Um, I've always said that I, I can't really center clay or work with clay if I'm not centered myself. So for me, the practice of working on a wheel um, is a meditative practice where I do have to get all of that out of my mind, all of those daily trappings out of my mind and be present in this moment and pour myself into this form. Um, I've worked with uh, different kinds of wheels. Um, and one of the things that really means a lot to me when I'm working on a wheel is that transfer um, into the clay from my hands, from my knowledge, from my brain, um, in creating something that that's a part of me that that I poured myself into. So very meditative. I hope that you find something meaningful and meditative from this as well. And um, again, thank you so much for inviting me, Margaret.
Oh my goodness, Lester. Whew. So fun. <laughs> Just so beautiful. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah. when I when I when I work at the wheel, um, there's time. Everything just kind of changes, and uh, it feels like it's been about five minutes for me. Um, I can't believe it's it's been almost half an hour. So uh, you know, I, was, I, I wonder: are there any questions about what I'm doing or my work or anything that I could answer for you? Please, friends, unmute and share any thoughts you have. I just, I am amazed where you had it. It was a solid form. And then all of a sudden you put with one touch, it became a totally different piece. How do you <laughs> know what to like, do you just, is it instinct or do you have a thought in mind? So it's kind of a combination actually. I mean, I, I uh, will go in, you know, with an idea that I want to create. Um, if I want to make a bowl or a mug or something like that, or some sort of vessel, um, I'll go in typically with an idea of what I want to do. Um, and I'll make sure that I have, you know, enough clay for it. So those were two and a half pound um, uh, pieces of clay. Oh. But every single, um, every single bit of clay that I throw with is kind of individual. And it has its own personality. So what you saw with all of that clay was kind of a, a dialogue, I guess, kind of a back and forth between kind of my will and my hands and then the clay body itself. Wow. Um, sometimes, sometimes, uh, you know, it doesn't work out the way I want it to. Um, and that's okay. Uh -huh. Um, so it's, it's really like, it's more of a dialogue actually. And, uh, you know, if one thing that I've learned working with clay is um, you can't rush it. You cannot tell clay what to do. You cannot rush it because uh, it will win. <laughs> 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 but, you know, and that it kind of goes back also to what I was telling you at the beginning of this session that I have to really kind of empty my mind out and mm -hmm. be present in the here and now. Uh, to be able to have that dialogue with the clay. So if I'm if I'm working, um, if I come come into the studio and I have a lot of things on my mind, and I sit down with clay uh, at the wheel, you know, if I can't clear my mind out and, and just really kind of connect and focus on the clay and on myself, then you know I can't really center. You know, so it's interesting. It really is. And a follow-up question, do the dogs ever get their nose in it? <laughs> uh, sometimes, sometimes. they. And I've been known to take clay upstairs to get paw prints. <laughs> they make great hey. Christmas ornaments. <laughs> As they're wandering back and forth while you're at the wheel, does that distract your dialogue or do you not even see them? Um, I, I was aware that uh, Tucker, I was aware that one of the dogs was was walking around and sort of investigating. Um, but I, I'm not sure I could tell you how many times he walked by. I really kind of when I'm when I'm working on on the wheel and I'm focusing on the clay, it, it really, you know, it, I really am in this kind of place in this sort of zone. And uh, time and everything is just sort of different. It's, it's amazing, actually. And Larry was noting in the chat that you are, you are expressing and kind of summing up what was happening in the chat without realizing because you haven't seen the chat yet. Right. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> and I will share it with you afterwards as I did the last time. Um, last time Lester was here, he was just amazed to see what had happened in the chat while he was doing that and um, what was what was arising and everyone from it. But um, you, you've summed it up there in the dialogue between the, the clay and, and your hands, the potter and being shaped and yeah. 
And I think well, last year, you're actually defining prayer there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Don't you yeah. Know everyone uh, coming into that dialogue. And I love that it's connected to the earth and the way it is with the, the clay. The creator creation. So you so Margaret, last last year um, when you shared the conversation that was happening while I was working, yeah. um, it was a real um, it was a real gift um, to me to read over what people how they were reacting to what I was doing, and I'm just very appreciative of mm -hmm. of all of you or those who were here last year. Um, thank you so much. It was wonderful to read that. We are really, really delighted with you sharing your, your practice with us and allowing us to take it on as our practice too in the, in the participating in that dialogue, perhaps as, as bystanders to what you're doing, but we're having our own dialogue while it's happening, which is very, very special. So thank you, Lester, and thank you all for being here. And I hope that you carry that with you through the week. Deep peace. Thank you, Lester. Thank, thank you. you. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night. Good Happy night. Thanksgiving. Good night. Good night. Wow. What a